People don't play Mario Party because it's Mario Party. They play Mario Party because they're hammered and can't even wrap their brains around anything as strenuous as belting out the lyrics to Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots. There's always that one guy who's got no musical talent at all and can barely deal with keys on easy, so Rock Band isn't always the answer. At that point, it's either Mario Party or... Well, what if we took that idea of a multiplayer board game and made it an RPG? Yes, an RPG. Seems counterproductive, nursing a good buzz, but hear me out. Dokupon Kingdom manages to streamline, and most importantly, speed up the RPG experience into something you can play with three other people in the room without one or more of them nodding off. It's strange to say the least, but I could totally see me and three other people doing exactly this. Dokupon Kingdom takes place across a map full of encounter spaces, item spaces, magic spaces, towns, and other various facilities, the majority of which are named after rivers for whatever reason. Now seriously, you can claim the Allegheny here, and presumably go digging for baseballs if you really want. The king of Dokupon Kingdom, rather an effectual monarch that he is, has decided that his successor shall be chosen by seeing which of up to four adventurers can rack up the most cold hard currency and associated assets before an arbitrary number of weeks have elapsed. Said winner then gets... the princess's hand in marriage, or the king's, depending. And that's kinda creepy from two directions at once if you stop to think about it. So I won't. The point is, it's an honest-to-god RPG in super tiny doses alternated with other players on a big old board. Each turn, representing one day of an in-game week, sees each character spinning to see how many spaces they move, then heading out across the map to find the most advantageous spot to land. It might trigger a roulette to obtain an item or spell or cash, it might spark an encounter with an NPC, or it might result in a battle against a monster of some description. In keeping with the quick and easy theme, Dokupon Kingdom's battles are one-turn affairs where your options are short and simple. Attack, which can be defended by the opponent, magic of offensive and defensive varieties, strike, which is susceptible to counterattacks, use a class-based skill, and concede. Fail to off the monster in one turn, and you'll have to scuffle again next turn, costing you that turn. That said, the rewards are fairly great. Cash, EXP, cash, items, cash, and a potentially liberated city, which is worth more than anything else. These cities, and the liberation thereof, are your primary wealth engine throughout the game, and can be used to heal up or collect taxes for pocket change. Upgraded weapons and armor don't buy themselves, after all. So you're balancing grinding for levels with knocking down big monsters, shopping, upgrading, or further taxing your lands, and... Well, should you land on an opponent's space, you can get into a scrum with them directly, potentially liberating them of all their cash. <laughs> Dokupon Kingdom puts a spin on the party game that, frankly, sends it right up my alley like a frightened cat. Get it? Because it's an alley. Though only three character classes are available at the outset, a further nine can be unlocked, as can bestiary entries on all the strange creatures you'll be taking down over the course of the game. I never expected an RPG could work under these rather absurd limitations, but the bite-sized nature of the quest means even those with woefully short attention spans, and those artificially shortened, should have no trouble picking it up and running with it. Which in that state could be pretty dumb. You put your eye out, kid. Lost!